So today we have an update for Metroid Prime 4, and one of these updates is actually something I find to be extremely newsworthy, and then the rest is dealing in the rumor space, so obviously grab your tinfoil hats and stick them on your head and get ready to tune in, because uh, it's going to be kind of a wild ride, and Metroid Prime 4 is not something I've actually spent a lot of time dedicating to, but I do think this is a major game coming out for Nintendo Switch, maybe even Nintendo Switch 2, very soon. <sighs> okay. All right. Now, before I dive into all of that, I heard some of you guys in the last video, you're kind of tired of Oreos, right? I don't know how it's possible to be tired of Oreos, but it happens. So you know what? Good thing we always have the donuts at the ready. That's right. For every new subscriber, you might get donuts raining on down you from above. So why not subscribe to the channel as we're on our road to 150,000 subscribers? Also, as a reminder, because I guess some people need to be reminded, we do have timestamps, so you can just jump to the section of the video you care about most. So the first thing we're going to talk about here is some context for what we're talking about today, because Metroid Prime 4 is a game that, hey, they announced back in 2017, they've you know rebooted it back in early 2019, and now here we're sitting there wondering when this game is going to come out. Now, Papa Genos had a rumor that we talked about earlier. He's a fellow YouTuber. We talked about this in a prior Prime News video where he simply stated the game is basically done and it's been delayed because they are redoing cutscenes. And look, he had, you know, a, a lot more long-winded explanation, but that's really what it breaks down to. And that's really cool. And I did add from my own source earlier this year that the game simply is close to being done, could be in the polishing stages or the final stages of development, call it whatever you want, but it's definitely not in the middle of development. It's actually more towards the end. There is much less to do moving forward than there was behind it. Now, that's all fine and good, and obviously we had the Metro Prime Remaster Shadow Drop earlier this year. Sorry, Jeff Grubb, you had to get your hair cut off for that one, but what I find really fascinating, of course, is the new stuff here that we haven't touched upon, and we're going to dive into the rumors first, and so get those tinfoil hats on, because we started with the context of what we've already talked about, so why not continue the rumor mill, and I want to give some credit here over to Andres Restart for this following bit of information we're talking about these following rumors because he dug them up and you know what it's pretty fascinating because it comes from one of the best nintendo insiders we have in nate the hate now this stuff all was posted over on family boards and it starts with a user over there called it was me want to be 19 and he said this is trying to connect the obviously false and they're talking about the papa genus rumor Prime 4 is done rumors from Nate, etc., with many job postings Retro had filed for working on Prime 4 cutscenes. Now, Dark Cloud went ahead and quoted that and said, When did Nate say the game was done? Well, rather than wait for other people to respond, Nate the Hate himself responded and said, Never. He goes by the name Nate Drake on these forums. All I've ever said is that they could have shown the game this year if they wanted to. And there is a gulf of difference between the game being finished and being content complete. To my knowledge, the game remains in active development. Now, this is important to note because while I did say the game was close to complete earlier this year, that didn't mean it was content complete, right? There is a difference between the bulk of development being done and the game is ready to be shown versus it actually being like 100% complete. I'll give you an idea. Last year, Tears of the Kingdom was actually done in March of 2022. There was an interview where they said the game was done, but they really spent this entire last year before Tears of the Kingdom came out polishing the game, and that could have meant polishing up certain content to make the game content complete. And I do think this might be a stage Metroid Prime 4 is in currently to make sure that it is the best possible game it can be, because I do think Metroid Prime 4 has a shot to break boundaries. Now, again, rumors say it potentially might be extremely open. I don't know about that, but hey, that's what rumors are for, right? They're fun to talk about and fun to get excited for. But Nate wasn't done talking because Dark Cloud responded and said, do you think it will release next year? And Nate responded directly and said, yeah, the only thing preventing a 2024 release 
as if Nintendo holds it back for strategic reasons. But the cinematic delay claim is not accurate. So as I'm saying here, he is basically saying he doesn't agree with what Papa Gino said about a cinematic delay of any sorts. And again, we don't know who Papa Gino's sources are. I don't have any reason to doubt Papa Gino's or Nate the Hate or really any of these people talking about it. They all have fairly decent track records. But at the same point, these are all rumors to all of us, right? We You're supposed to go into this with a cloud of doubt. And as fun as rumors are to talk about, obviously facts are even more fun. But it does seem at least likely, and I again, I have one source on this, that it's probably going to come out next year. And look, we can call this an educated guess if you want, or as some like to call it, informed speculation that it's coming in 2024. And I think that's what... Nate himself is working on based on his current knowledge of the state of the game. He suspects it's going to come out in 2024. That is his informed speculation. And that is speculation, even based on what I have heard, I agree with as well. So you look at these rumors, you look at what he has heard, multiple sources talking about how close this game is to being done. I would argue that, yeah, the informed speculation way to do this would be to say it's probably going to come out in 2024. Now, that's really exciting. And again, it doesn't get into whether it's going to be a cross-generation title. I know a lot of us are on that cross-generational train. But now we got to dive into something that's a bit more based in facts, at least publicly available facts of people actually working on the game. And this is where... I need to give our good pal Super Metal Dave 64 some credit here. He's he's always on top of everything to do with Metroid. So if you're very interested in Metroid coverage, you should go check him out. He does other things as well. But he noticed something about a certain major developer at Retro Studios known as Cat Gray. And she's an environmental artist. Okay, that's cool. You obviously have a lot of environmental artists for a game like this. But if you look at her portfolio of games, she actually has a lot of work done on multiplayer maps for games like Rogue Company and others. So that seems to be a lot of her background is working on that kind of stuff. Now, that doesn't mean she can't do environmental artist work on things that are not related to multiplayer, but it's just notable she has experience in that field and is currently working at Retro studios but it gets more interesting than that because metroid's actually not a series afraid of doing multiplayer so metroid prime hunters is one a lot of people look back on and go oh yeah that was a multiplayer metroid game and absolutely it was but actually metroid prime 2 echoes had a multiplayer mode itself that featured a deathmatch and a bounty mode, and you could play up to four players and four players split screen, and it was pretty fun. It wasn't, you know, as fleshed out as some other multiplayer modes at the time in other games, Halo as an example, but it definitely was a very, very fun experience for your local players. And then beyond this, we had Metro Prime Federation Force, which had multiplayer in the form of being a cooperative shooter. There was also a 3v3 mode in the game. Look, it was a lot of fun as well. I know it got a lot of flack, way more flack than it probably deserved at the time. But the point is that we've had two multiplayer-specific Metroid games come into existence, both of which use the Metroid Prime branding, right? Metroid Prime Hunters, Metroid Prime Federation Force. And then one of the core Metroid Prime games, you know, 1, 2, and 3, Number two had a multiplayer mode. I don't think it's too far to say Metroid Prime 4 looks like it might, and again, this is still a might, but it's based on fact-based information, have a multiplayer aspect to it. And I'm not saying it's going to be a co-op all through the game kind of thing. I think it's still going to mostly be a single-player experience for the main campaign, but I'm, I'm thinking there will be a multiplayer mode. And as, you know, a lot of people have pointed out, at least since Andres put up his video yesterday, Andres Restart, this is something that people haven't really been talking about with Metroid Prime 4, is this idea of an extensive multiplayer mode. And I do think it deserves a lot more attention because, look, Metroid Prime uh, has literally three different multiplayer aspects to it over the years. So why wouldn't they put this in 4? 
Plus, it's been in development for a long time, and this could be a tentpole game that might finally take the Metroid franchise beyond the two to three million it usually sells and might finally become that five, six, seven, maybe 10 million seller, especially if it's a cross-generation title where you're going to have the people who are super excited to play something brand new on Switch 2, and then you still have that huge install base of Switch as well that you could possibly sell to. And again, you know, with, with Switch 2, you could have the 60 FPS of the 4K and taking the visuals even further because Metro Prime Remaster, for all the debates I've had in the past, it legitimately does look really, really good, especially on Switch. So just imagine what Metroid Prime 4 is going to look like on Switch, let alone getting some bumps and some ray tracing abilities and other things like that maybe added in with a Switch 2 version. Why not have a really, really amazing online multiplayer mode to go along with this? And if done right, I think it could end up being something that's going to make this a game that's more evergreen. And that's one thing Metroid has never really been able to do. And that's what I mean by... This Metroid Prime 4 could be a boundary-breaking game. It could not only have this more open experience that's going to bring more gamers into the fold and, and make this a bit less of a niche appeal title, they also could end up breaking boundaries with its sales because the bottom line is Metroid games tend to be pretty much the one of the non-evergreen titles for Nintendo. It sells pretty much all its copies in one month, and it doesn't sell much more after that. But if there's a, a thriving online multiplayer aspect to this franchise, it might actually let Metroid Prime 4 last for years. And if we think about this, it's quite exciting because while Nintendo has multiplayer games, right? We have our, our kart racers of Mario Kart. We have our uh, third-person shooter things with Splatoon 3. We obviously have Smash Bros. for fighting. What Nintendo doesn't really have is a popular first person shooter multiplayer game and what if that's what this is becoming what if that's the idea here this sprawling single player campaign combined with a sprawling multiplayer first person shooter aspect nintendo might be able to make this a really 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 big deal if they can get this to take off again we've seen games like halo and others be able to take off so what if they put the sort of attention to detail the old halo games for multiplayer used to do I keep leaning towards that because they're both sci-fi themed, but it doesn't have to be exactly like Halo. They could find their own way to make it appealing. I'm just throwing out there that, again, we don't know that this is for sure going to be a thing. We don't even know for sure it's going to come out next year. But things are lining up where Metro Prime 4 is starting to sound like a very exciting game, especially for a game that has been announced. All you guys out there always tell me, stop talking about Nintendo Switch 2. It hasn't been announced. I mean, technically it was announced in 2021 when Nintendo said they were bringing Nintendo accounts forward to their next generation device releasing in 20XX. So uh, technically it was announced. Or not like revealed to exist. I don't know, whatever you want to say. But... Unlike that, Metroid Prime 4 was given a title and a logo and it was dropped and we know it's happening and we've had updates, at least one update on it since then. So we're going to sit back and wait. I presume we're going to find out about this game pretty early next year. I wouldn't be shocked if Metroid Prime 4 is actually in the February Direct. That's how soon I think we might see this. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Robojance from Nintendo Prime. Let me know if you're excited for the prospect of Metro Prime 4 down in the comments below. And if you want to get more Metro Prime 4 coverage next year, really let me know because I'm not sure how, how my audience is going to take. We don't make a lot of Metroid videos, but I do think that this is a very important IP that has really the right opportunity here for massive growth. I'll catch you guys in the next video.